Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom, and right now during Theros Beyond Death previews, Card Kingdom is hooking up everyone who pre-orders Theros Beyond Death product with a sweet new spirit token. So head over to CardKingdom.com and pre-order your Theros Beyond Death cards today. Don't panic, you're watching Babelfish, the only show that doesn't leave the house without a towel. In this episode, we'll sit down with Brandon Crane, aka Booster Tutor. Join us as we discuss his Random Buys series, talk tips on finding and evaluating cheap collections, and then battle with our own flea market chaos seal decks in this episode of Babelfish, Collecting Chaos. Hey everyone, I'm Brandon Crane, aka Booster Tutor. I do a lot of random videos for Magic the Gathering, but mainly I'm known for my random buys. So Brandon, what's the story behind the creative spark that started your channel, Booster Tutor? At my local shop, I was kind of known as like buying these lots and stuff. And then someone's like, you should do a video on this. I was like, I should do a video on this. This is great content. So yeah, that was my first one. It was my first Craigslist collection. And yeah, it just took off after that. Hey everyone, welcome to Booster Tutor. I'm Brandon. And today we're gonna to do things a little different. No crack packs or anything. I'm going to go over a collection I got off on Craigslist. So we have an invasion. It says red, blue, aggro. Let's see what they put on the red, blue, aggro. It's really entertaining to watch you um, go to a flea market or purchase a, a collection from somebody off uh, Craigslist and then like watch you open it up and just see what you paid for versus like what you opened and what the value is. <laughs> right now it's like can be $20 and there's like $100 worth of cards or more, stuff like that. I get it from my mom. She loves going to the thrift stores and collecting so many things. So I would just look on Craigslist and stuff, like in my early days, looking for, you know, people's old collections. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought it was all Urza Mines. Ah, oh, oh, lightning bolt. There's this tower, Urza Mine, that's cool. Of course, will. That, that works. I wasn't the best at it in the beginning. I remember one time I bought a collection. I met this lady and she said it was like her brother's stuff and it was in storage and he was he said, hey, just sell it. And she gave me this little box of stuff and a binder and it had like a bunch of really good stuff. I was like, sweet, okay. And then she sold me some more and there were some fetch lands on top. And she's like, I like $200. I was like, okay, sure, yeah. And then, But it was also because it was like piles and piles of cards, just like boxes. I was like, took up like my whole trunk. She has another ad out. And then like we meet at the same place, I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's the same lady. And she opens her trunk, she has literally like seven boxes of cards. I don't know, just tons of cards. So right on top is this. And of course I'm like, oh, let me look through this, see if there's anything good. Looking through it, see a fetch land, and I see a man land. And I'm like, okay, sold. And then when I went through the random buy, it turns out all those were commons. This is all new stuff, which I just do not care about. Sorry, but I'm not gonna go through Theros and Eldric Moon commons and commons. And she just like put the nice stuff on top. And I was like, I mean, I guess I kind of broke even, but she also just sold me a bunch of bulk. And like, I just, I guess it was just my mindset of like, I mean, if this is right here, then there has to be some great stuff in, in all these other boxes. It was just all bulk, like just not even rares, just commons, a few uncommons. Yeah, that one, that one hurt. <laughs> Well, you know, that's the, the risk, you know, of of doing these random buys and trying to find, yeah, yeah, you know, trying to evaluate a deal on the spot. You know, it's not really an easy an easy thing to do because you have to jump on these quickly. You have to evaluate them quickly, usually in person with the seller there, like, yeah, looking at you, and then you need to evaluate, like, you know, is what they're asking fair? Try to talk them down. Um, so it's, there's like a lot going on. And that just is, I think, maybe the thrill of the the hunt and the thrill of the purchase. Um, yeah, well, what I like to do is, because I wanna make it random, is I'll like say they want $50 for something. So I'll look through the collection until I find like something that's of like $50 of value. Cause I at least wanna break even and then I'll just stop. Like if I find something, even if I find something like, oh, it's $30, like one card, like say I'm looking through, they want $75 and I see a Cavern of Souls. I'm like, okay, sure. Because then maybe there's more stuff there and uh, that'll be awesome. But then again, maybe there's nothing there like that one lady and I'll kind of break even. It's not a complete loss, at least makes a video, but I try to keep it so I don't know exactly what's in there. 
So where do you find your buys, Brandon? I know you uh, you check Craigslist and you go to your local flea markets. Are there any other social media apps? There's two, Let Go and Offer Up, but those are very hit or miss. Craigslist is probably the best to use, but it's also the most popular. So what I do is I put like notifications, basically for like MTG, magic cards, magic gathering, stuff like that. Even like sometimes you might put like a misspelling because people just misspell stuff. But just whenever something goes up, then like in a few minutes, you'll get a notification or email or something. So, but you have to be super fast on that because a ton of people are going to be going after those. I love just going to flea markets in general because, you know, you find all kinds of crazy stuff. And I don't find magic cards that often at flea markets, but you know, it's still a thing to do. It's just that it takes so much time to go through a flea market. It takes like two hours and you can just end up in empty Hampton, which really sucks. So Brandon, what was like the uh, best random buy that you ever picked up? So I went on Craigslist and surprisingly, this was an ad that had been up for four days. It showed just boxes of Urza, Saga, Destiny, uh, Exodus and stuff. They showed some cards and it was just commons on commons for $75. I was like, it's like a two hour drive. Why not? I'll check it out. I got a Sunday off or I'm off on Sunday. Go down there and I meet the guy and I'm looking through it and I know some rares. I was like, wait a minute, what? And he said like, this was a storage auction. I guess a card store closed down, but he really wanted the baseball cards. So he's just trying to get rid of these. And I was like, yeah, sure. I'll totally take these for $75. Memory crystal. Oh, okay. Whew. Wow. All okay. right, see your traders. Do we have another one? Do we have another one? Okay, we do. Two see your traders. How many is there? Okay, two. I'll take it. That's amazing. Oh, and a sphere of resistance. Okay, sure. Why not? Three treacheries so far. Yeah, I'll take that. Kami Rector. It's replenish, yeah. False Prophet, another Rector. Wow. Okay. Uh, uh, Gaius Cradle, yeah. In the Urza's Legacy Box, that works. Jeez, okay. And yeah, that one, it was like everything you wanted out of that buy. That thing was freaking amazing. And then people always kind of bring up like, hey, do you feel bad because there's a lot of value in that and you're underpaying it? But I'm like, this guy asked for that. And I looked till I found the value of what he was asking for. And then it's not like I tried to talk him down because I don't like doing that. If I found the value, I don't be like, oh, uh, would you do this? Like that's, that's a little shady, but don't be afraid to haggle also. People are always up for haggling, it seems like. I think they kind of, it's kind of expected on Craigslist and stuff like that, especially flea markets. People like to buy and sell and talk and chat. And that's really, I think, right. what, it, what it comes down to. <laughs> yeah. If they're not showing off the money cards, then they don't really know what they have. So you can probably get a good deal. But if they're showing off like, oh, look at all these cards I have. And then it's like, okay, well, you know what you're gonna have. It's gonna be, you know, overpriced or at its worth. And if I wanted to pay at its worth, then I would just buy the cards individually. So I'm trying to find like deals here to just, you know, get a good deal. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Unsorted, yeah. like an unsorted collection, basically. And that's exactly. Uh, so, Brandon, if I was interested in trying to find a random buy and trying to find a good deal to hunt down and purchase, um, what are some things that I should be looking for? First off, let's say you want to go to a flea market. You have to go every week. That's what I do. I go every week. I um, every Sunday I'll go to the, my one of my local ones. And I'll just go through everything. What's not what's nice is you can kind of tell when there's gonna be magic cards and when there isn't and stuff. Like if you see baseball cards, not gonna be magic cards there. <laughs> like that person was in the in sports, they probably collected those. You can skip that. But if you see like, you know, maybe there's like a Dungeon Dragons book or something, or maybe some hero clicks, you're like, oh, okay, maybe I should look around for this. Like if it's something you're interested in, there also might be magic cards there. But it's also about just the due diligence of going every single week, which is very time consuming, but it can be worth it sometimes. Craigslist, uh, you wanna stay away from anyone that says like, I have a lot of commons and commons, of course. It's like, they know what they have. What you want is maybe just, you know, they have a box, they have a picture of their cards and they have a low price 
I also just like to stay low in the price, like around 50 to 75. If I start getting up to $200, I'm like, that's not gonna be worth it probably. Like maybe there's something awesome there, but I'm not gonna take a chance on $200 to maybe get some cards. Uh, I don't do eBay. I've heard some people do good stuff on eBay, but I feel like that's just, you know, going into a minefield of like people who know what they have and everything. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it. Check Craigslist, check flea markets, set alerts, and then you gotta be quick. Yeah. Well, I went to go try and find a, um, a, a random buy so that we could do like a random buy battle. Uh, but unfortunately, I didn't have any luck doing it. You know, I'm up, I'm up here in Maine, so the flea markets here are like a mix of antique shops. It's a yeah, lot of- Yeah, that's another geez. thing, yeah. So I think there's definitely a big distinction between a what a flea market is and what an antique store is. But I went to one, two, three, four other flea markets and they were huge, Jeez. like massive barns and just long, long tables of junk. But that's all it was, it was just junk. It was yeah. uh, either a mix of antiques or crafts or books, so many books, so many Tools. baseball cards. And at the very last flea market, I, I found some cards, but they were literal, literally a um, stack of just stuff crammed into a sandwich bag and they're asking like ten dollars per per bag of of, of junk uh, and when i when was going through it it was like lands and commons and like nothing yeah nothing good at all they probably just didn't know what they had but were like eh magic cards here you go ten bucks yeah so unfortunately my area is pretty dry <laughs> but um what i'm hoping that we can do is a random buy battle you know that we can each open up a random buy um, kind of evaluate what we have, what the what the price was that was paid, what we're kind of seeing for value in in the collection, and then build a deck out of that to uh, play in paper. Yeah, sounds awesome. And Great I'm idea. praying <laughs> that maybe you have a couple extra, you have an extra buy laying around that you could uh, that can maybe buy off you. I do. I uh, so what happens is I, like, I get all these random buys, and they'll kind of just sit there because. Like, oh, this one's okay. I can tell it's gonna be okay. But then like something really good comes along. So that kind of gets pushed to the side. And then I do this one and like, if it's really good, I'll split it into three videos. So that's like three months. And then I kind of just forget about that. And like, I have one over here. I kind of remember buying it, but I don't really remember what was in it. So I'll probably just send you that one. <laughs> and you know, we can see how it goes. I, I had one that I got my flea market, which was very cheap, but uh, I think it could be fun. So definitely a great idea I want to try out. This is awesome. Cool. Um, I also understand that, that, that you are um, you are a mailman, Brandon. Is that, is that correct? Yes. Yes. And it is crazy right now. It is very tiring. <laughs> well, we're definitely, yeah, we are in the holiday season. And I think I might need you to pull some strings to make sure that this package gets delivered to me quickly oh. and efficiently. So. I know a few people. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> I know a guy. Oh, hi, Susie. Where's this package off to? Oh, Maine. Wow. That sure is far. Here we go. Whee! Look at all the packages. Crazy. Oh, Steve. Throw that package. Here we go. Beep, beep. Perfect. Woo woo. Crunch crunch. Mail's here. Here you go, Susie. It smells like magic cards. Why don't you give it to your pop? Oh, I love my package. Dad, you got mail. A few moments later. Yeah, let me tell you about what I opened up. All right. First of all, thanks for you know joining me for the for the gameplay in the box opening. I appreciate no the gift uh, random buy that you bestowed <laughs> upon me that came in like last Friday and over the weekend. I got to open it up uh, and take a look at the cards and kind of price out what was worth the worthwhile cards from from the collection and also build okay. this deck that you see here. It was interesting because. 
I know you looked at it a little bit before you before you sent it to me, and there was a lot of uh, Mirrodin and f- yeah, I yeah. think f- a lot of artifacts, a lot of artifacts, and it was almost like the the owner or whoever had the collection, he had he almost had like his deck sort of. Yeah, it was just in a binder with pages, and it looked like he just took apart his deck and put it in there almost. I tried to make it, it was there's definitely like an Esper like mono black focus, but I didn't really see a whole lot of support in there. So I, I pivoted it more towards mono blue artifacts with some Still white good. for utility and then like splashed black for like a bomb and some other um some other stuff. What I pulled out for like expensive cards was it um was an amulet of vigor. So that's a Okay, yeah. That was that that was a good nice. pull. Uh there was also uh, I, don't, I don't remember if it's a judge's version of the rat. I think it's a Planeswalker deck. Planeswalker deck one. It's 867 in paper for some reason. Oh, geez. Nice. Yeah. So that's that's 30 right there for value. And then nice. in the deck, there's a there's a foil overflowing chalice. Nice. And we have two masters of Ethereum. A... Ether Sworn Canonist, uh, Marshall's Anthem, and then a Lodestone Golem. Oh God, you're gonna destroy me! <laughs> so there's a there's a whole bunch of one mana CC. I'll say yeah, a lot of one drops there. <laughs> Tons of one drops. So the thought is, you can get them back with uh, Leonin Squires, and then just like mill through the deck with the Thought Couriers. So yeah, so it's like a very low to the ground deck, and then it has some. Some bigger payoff cards here with like Marshall's Anthem, and uh, there's some searching capabilities. So I have like one Trinket Mage to get any of these guys, and then I do have like two nice. equipments to pull with the Swordsmith. And then there's a, a Gilded Lotus, which Gilded Lotus, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. So yeah, I thought this was, why not? <laughs> I thought this was pretty good. Like it was, it was close yeah. to what I was imagining to to pull from a deck with a random buy. Like I was, a, I was picturing like a lot of fourth edition and getting a Vanderbilt's disc and kind of having sort of a <laughs> pathway that you could build, but also some other cards to kind of change it around. And I, I definitely feel like there was a theme here from the collection, uh, and then I yeah. got to tweak it a bit with the rest of the cards in that in the in the person's collection. So. Yeah. yeah, that's what's nice about round buys. Like a lot of times, they're just people's like their decks are still half built in there. So you have a bunch of cards. Just hey, this is already like a, a pipeline to this deck, basically. Yeah. So thanks again. Um, I'll no, tell you what. Merry though, Christmas. If you win, if you beat me today, I'm gonna okay. give you a special gift, and that is dun 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 dun, dun Smallville ah! complete <laughs> nice. season four, <laughs> just season. for you. Nice. If. I do love Smallville, actually. <laughs> a lot of people love Smallville, but uh, you have to be a, a fan to jump to jump right into the fourth uh, fourth season complete. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'd love to hear what you what you got built or okay. what you opened up. All right. All right. So my deck is dumb, but it, I'm guessing fun. So these are my creatures. They are all defenders. So we've got just like you know some. Uh, zero fours that gain me life. We got Wall of Frost. We got the Axbane, who is gains mana for how many defenders you have in play. Mm-hmm. So a nice way to ramp there. I have a suspicious bookcase, which gives things un- unblockable, basically. Um, so yeah, just a bunch of defenders. And then my game plan here is to either use Wakestone Golem or Gargoyle, who is a three four defender but can make other things not have defender, and then Assault Formation which is all my creatures deal damage equal to their toughness. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Then my plan B is mill, of course. Oh. Always the plan B. Okay. So we got Doorkeeper, who is a defender. Uh, but, you know, you tap him, pay three. He makes you mill how many defender, according to how many defenders I have in the battlefield. Um, then we have Screaming Shield, which is an equipment that gives plus O oh, plus three. And they can pay two and tap it. And... You have to mill three cards. And then the bomb is patient rebuilding, five mana. At the beginning of my upkeep, target opponent puts a top three card to the library into the graveyard. Then I draw a card for each land card put into the graveyard this way. So, Well, I'm disappointed that you decided to build a mill deck. (laughs) I had to. It was in the cards. 
Like I had better cards in the, the thing, like they're in my sideboard just uh-huh. in case this doesn't work out. But I was like, I have to go this theme. I have to like no, I could cool. put these cool. awesome creatures in there. Yeah. But I'm going to make it all defenders. <laughs> nice. Uh, so yeah. did you open up uh, with your random buy? Was it mostly uh, newer cards? Uh, yeah, it was like um, Battle for Zendikar era and... Um, like Eldric Moon and stuff. It was uh, a, like a five dollar random buy I got at flea market, and I and the guy like played Magic and still played. So I think these were just cards that he was like, "Oh, I don't really need these anymore. I'm just going to try to get some money." So I think that's why there was almost a Defender deck in here. Like it looks like he tried to make a a Commander deck like that or something, and it didn't work out. So he was just kind of getting rid of it. Yeah. So there was nothing really big in value. Okay. So are we, are we both three colors? Because I'm Bant. Yep, I'm Esper. Okay. You know, or, or black, white, blue, as I, as I like to call it. Yeah. All right. Let's roll, sir. Right. Do, you have a, do you have a D20? Okay. I do have a D20. That oh. was off camera. It has to be on camera. I have to see what it is. Okay. okay. 18. 18. Good luck. With your fuzzy, with your fuzzy focus, that could be... That could be, could be an eight. Could be a one. Yo, ah, seven. All right, your choice. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, shall I cut for myself? Oh yeah, sure. All right. There we go. All right. Good luck. Good luck. Okay. I will keep this. Okay. Let me take a look here. Hmm. I don't like it. <laughs> no, sir. I don't no, like sir, it. No, sir. I don't like it. Oh, I can draw seven. That's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> oh, that is passable. What do I not want? <laughs> Let's see. I get rid of one now. I think I can get rid of. I get rid of. Get rid of that card. That card at the bottom. All right. I'll go first. Okay. I'll play Zorius Guildgate. Ooh. Your go. All right, my turn. I'm going to draw a card. Aw. Okay. <laughs> go for an island. We're going to do a Aether Spell Bomb. So one mana artifact that you can sacrifice for a blue to return a creature to his owner's hand or to sacrifice and draw a card. And I'll say, go ahead. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Untap. Draw. Ooh, okay, I will play. Hmm. Let's play a forest. Tap green and a white. Mm-hmm. And get a gate creeper vine. Gate so creeper this is the O2 with Defender. I can search my library for a basic land or gate card, reveal it, put it in my hand. Nice. So I will get a gate, and you may go. The walls. The walls are coming down. Well, right. the walls yes, are the walls are going up. Guild gate. All right, go for another island, and we're going to tap two for a thought career. Well, yeah, what does that do? That is a 1-1 uh, one, one human wizard. You tap to draw a card and then discard a card, so you tap to loot. So it's a looter. Nice. And then uh, that's the end of my turn. All right. Okay. And tap, draw. I will play. Hmm. All these come into play tap. Let's do a Stirring Wildwood. Nice. Get a threat on board. And that is it. Okay. Here we go. All right, and untap. Draw land, please. Okay. Hmm, I think I'm gonna go ahead and loot now. Yeah. So, draw. And we got a discard. So. All right, and discard a rest. Hopefully that's a good choice. <laughs> and I'm afraid of your hand then if you're <laughs> discarding that. Uh, we're gonna go for a dread statuary. So it's um. It's pretty good. <laughs> tap for one colorless four, and it becomes a four-two golem. Ouch. And then we're gonna go for blue and a colorless, and do a Ethereum sculptor. One, Ugh. two, three. 
I got three cards in my hand. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pass to you. All right. And the sculptor makes your artifacts one less? Uh, yes, all artifacts cost yeah. one less. Gross. All right, draw. Okay. So, hmm. Guildgate. Then I'll play a Caravan Caratid. to 2 5 Defender. And where's about to play? Draw a card. Okay. All right. It's like a wall of blossoms, but with more power. Right. And okay, your go. Okay. Gonna untap. Okay. All right. Gonna draw. Gonna draw planes here. Ah, <laughs> oh, no planes. No planes for you. You don't need, you need more than one color. You're good. You're good. good. Well, we're gonna loot. Draw a card. Yeah. There you go. Da 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 da. Discard a card. Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four. I think. I don't think I can do anything. I think I have to wait. I have to wait it out. So I'm going to go ahead and pass back to you. All right. I'll untap. Draw. Okay. I'm going to play Plaza of Harmony. Okay. So when there's a battlefield, if I control two or more gates, which I do, I gain three life. All right. So I'm going to put you on the right hand side here and go one, two. Okay. And then I can tap it to add a colorless or tap it to add one mana of any type that a gate I control produced. All right, you got all the mana. I got all the mana. I'm going to play... Hmm. I don't have any threats I care about so much. So I'll play... Uven Wall Captive. Okay. Say 1-2 with Defender. I can tap it to add a a green mana. I can pay 7 to transform it. And then it becomes a 4-6 that taps for 2 colorless mana. Is it still a wall when it's a 4-6? No, we can attack them. And then I will play... Hmm. You know what? That looter is on my nerves. So I'm going to stasis snare your looter. Exile and when it enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls until stasis snare leaves the battlefield. Okay. Well, I'm going to take this opportunity. No. I feel I feel a little bad. You have no... Uh, what do you have open for mana? Uh, nothing. I'm nothing. tapped out. Okay. So I will uh, I'll condescend for one then. Counter, counter the spell as you can pay one. One, of course. Okay. All right. Which counter. is a little bit waste of my condescend, but I do want to scry two from the condescend. Yes, yeah. And of course, they're both the lands I was looking for. <laughs> so <laughs> very useful scry there. You're right. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll just take we'll just take them both. Okay. Tap two for a master of Ethereum. So one, two, three, four. He's a four, four, four. Gross. And then he also gets plus one, plus one. Wait, who does? Oh, uh, he gives other artifact creatures I control plus one, plus one as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's right. So it's like yeah. anthems up the rest of the artifact. Uh, I'm going to crack that for a planes and then uh, pass a turn back to you. All right. Untap. Okay, let's see that. All right, going to. Oh, I'm sorry. He's not a four four. He's a three three. I forget the thought courier is not. He's not an artifact. Oh yeah, let's do this. All right, so I'll tap it for five green. Okay. Um, and then tap two more to transform him. Yes. So now he's a four six. I can tap for two colorless, and then I'll activate my Wildwood. Okay. And I'll declare attackers. Four, six, and a three, four with reach, not vengeance. All right, coming at you. All right, what do you have left over for mana? Uh, nothing. Nothing, okay. So then I think this is a good time to spell bomb yep. your um, transformed Uvenwald guy. Okay. Boom. Get rid of that guy. Uh, I will also... Let's put that down to two to make it easier. I'm going to loot before blockers. Okay. okay. Uh, get rid of land. I think I'm just going to take three. So All right. if you have no effects, I'm going to go down nope. to 17. All right. And your turn. Okay. 
Draw something good here, deck. <laughs> Come on, deck. Dun 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 dun. Mm hmm. Okay, I'm gonna tap a blue. We're gonna get another sculptor out. <laughs> nice. We got all the <laughs> making all the art over here. Right. All right. So that's three artifacts. We're gonna go up to three. Th Three, three. Um, can't attack. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Go ahead and loot now. Aha. Gonna discard Dead Iron Sledge. I don't know what that does. It's an equipment for one mana. Whenever equipped creature blocks or becomes blocked, you get to destroy it. So I'm gonna discard uh, it because I'm gonna pick it back up here with um <laughs> nice. with the Leon and Squire. There you go. I get the hammer back, play the hammer for free. Oh yeah. oh yeah. And then I'm gonna go ahead and equip it to the squire. Uh whenever equipped creature blocks or becomes blocked by a creature, destroy that creature and the equipped creature. And there's one, two, three, four artifacts open up to a self destruct. Uh, you can't attack because the highest toughness you have is the two five guy, correct? Yep. yep. Okay, so I'm going to pass it back to you. All right, untap, draw, uh, play a land. So I'll play my Ubenwald again. Okay. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to tap for five green. And I'll play. Primal Clay oh. <laughs> as a 2-2 two, two flyer. Okay. Yeah, you only fl Okay. I laughed just because that's such an old card. But, uh, right. A 2-2 two, two flyer right now uh, will we'll, we'll do some work. So. <laughs> right. And then I have five floating, or well, sorry, one floating of green. So I'll pay, use one of the green and make the plaza a blue and play Jungle Barrier. Okay. Which is a 2-6. When there's a battlefield, I draw a card. Okay. And can't attack now, so you're go. All right, so the only walls I care about right now are the 2-6 and the 2-5. Yeah, because okay. they have actual power. You've got to have power. Did you ever play the Micropose? The Micropose, whatever it's called, Wizards game for Magic from back in the day? No, what's that? You never... I haven't even heard of this. Oh, the Chandelar game. No. no. Oh, no. I my, my computer couldn't run anything back in the day, so. Uh, all right. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to go ahead and tap for six. Plus two, and play a Sigil of Destruction for eight. Oh boy! So when it comes into play, it comes with X charge counters. So X is eight. To equip it, I have to remove a counter, and then equip creature okay. gets plus one plus one for each for each counter on the Sigil, basically. What? So I can make somebody a seven seven. Oh. Uh, the question is, who is that special somebody? I think probably the best thing I can do is go down to seven counters and just throw it on the Master of Ethereum, who is mm -hmm. now a one, two, three, four, a five, five. So he's a 12, 12. And then I'll just swing with the 12, 12 and let you chump block or do whatever you want to. Oh, your hearts I'm going to chump block with my. Uh, whenever he's dealt damage, I gain that much life. Oh, well, yep, gain 12. It's so I gain 12 me. and he dies. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right. All right. Sweet. Uh, that's it for me. Okay. okay. So untap. Let's see what I get. Interesting. I'll play a offshoot. Okay. So zero, 03. Uh, landfall. I gain a life. Okay. 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 I'm going to tap for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I had six before. Yeah, six. And pay one. 
to transform this. Oh, deja vu. <laughs> right. I'm just going to attack for two in the air. Can't do nothing about that. So down to mm -hmm. 15. And then I'm going to... Ugh, I don't want to do this, but oh well. I'm going to put revoke privileges on your master. Oh no. What does that do? So just can't attack, block, or crew vehicles. Oh, uh, okay. Well, that's sad. Take that. Take that, vehicles. And then I have one card in hand. And you're go. Oh, do I want to do the blind looting or not? <laughs> probably, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> but, all right, so I'm going to go ahead, untap, draw for the turn. Oh, LOL. All right, we're going to tap. I don't have to tap six. No, nope, that's too much mana. It's too much mana. Why, why would you tap for the full price of whatever you have? Yeah. You only got one card. You can't be tapping all that. All right, I'm going to tap uh, three, four, five, nope. six. No. We have Eternity Vessel. Oh, come on. To make it for the longest possible game ever in the history oh. of anything. Right. So this is Landfall. Uh, yeah, so life. Eternity Vessel enters the battlefield with X charge counters on it, where X is your life total. So I'm going to put okay. it at 15, if I can find a 15-sided dice, which I don't think they make those. Nope, nope. don't think that's a thing. <laughs> I don't think that's a thing. My limited knowledge of D&D. Of, uh, &D. <laughs> they should just make one for every number, come on. Right, one dice per number. Then a uh, landfall, whenever a land enters the battlefield, um, I can choose to have my life total become uh, 15, Ugh, right? That is the worst. That's, just, that's like the worst possible card. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I have to kill you when you're at 15, basically, but like somehow. Yeah, somehow you have to do damage. 15 or I have to like never draw another land. Great. Uh, Plan B it is. Oh, you're going to mill me out. Is that what you're going to do? How are you talking about? So I'll tap for four blue. And one. So that's five mana to play Patient Rebuilding. Oh, okay. So not until my upkeep, but target opponent puts the top three cards of his or her li or library into their graveyard. Then I draw a card for each land card put there. Okay. Um, okay. Is there like a, um, is there like an ultimate or something on there, or is it just always? Nope. Nope. That's, that's it. it. Just, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just gets you there little by little. That's what this deck does. <laughs> Makes for the slowest games possible. Okay, untap, upkeep, mill three. Oh, grave digger. Ooh, island one. Oh, thought cast. Oh, right. okay. So I draw one. Okay, and then I'll draw for the turn. Okay, so I'll play a land, gain one, gain a life. Twenty-two. I will pay one and play Screaming Shield. Perfect. Okay, uh, it's three to equip. That's fine. I'll equip it to just put it on my put it on my carotid. Okay. All right. So I have a ton of land still. So I'm sorry. Uh, Screaming Shield. Oh, sorry. It's um. I know you can mill it. Cuts. Yeah, it gets plus O oh, plus three. And then I pay two and tap, and target player puts the top three cards of the library into their graveyard. Pay the two. Honestly, you can probably just move your shield around and then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. All right. All right. So, so I'm going to go ahead and scoop. Yeah. You totally, you totally decked me. Okay. Good game. I just drew the assault formation. <laughs> the longest game. <laughs> that was a long uh, game. Um, hmm. That's going to come in. That's going to come in. That's going to come in. Okay. So I have one card that will kind of destroy you. What? How do you casually say that one card is going to just kind of destroy you? Can we show you what it is? No, that's fine. I'll keep that okay. as a surprise. All right. All right I will, uh, you I will go play. First. All right. Uh, yes. I will definitely keep. Okay. Um, yes, I will keep. All right, I'm going to lead on Terramorphic Expanse. Go ahead and crack that nice. for an island. And we'll see. Go ahead. Draw. <clears throat> I will get, or I'll play Simic Guildgate. All right. And here you go. 
Okay, untap, draw. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. All right, two for a Ether Sworn Cannon. Ugh, and, uh, gross. So each player who has played a non-artifact spell this turn can't play additional non-artifact spells. Okay, so basically one play per turn. One play per turn, unless Once you play artifact. artifacts. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right, let's do... Do a planes. I'll play... Gate Creeper Vine. O2 wall. Get a gate. Yep. Yeah, O2 wall, get a gate, put him a hand. And then you may go. Cool. Untap. Draw. All right. I'm going to play a Tectonic okay. Edge. Slesnia Gate. Then I'm ready to go to combat when you are. Is that a 0-2? Uh, two two or two two. I mean, two two. Uh, yeah. I will take it if you attack. Attack for two. Yeah. Eighteen. Take it. All right. I'm gonna tap for three. Oh, I well should have played him first, but I'll, I'll play him after combat. Oh yeah. Uh, Master of <laughs> Ethereum. Yeah, I kind of forget they has the anthem effect going on. Right. So he's uh two two at the moment. And go ahead. Two two. Well, if I lose by one by one point of damage, then I'll then I will be upset. But currently, I'll just forget about that. <laughs> Ooh, okay. All right. Play a forest. And I'll play Geist of the Archives. Okay. Zero four. Scry at the beginning of my upkeep. And you may go. Cool. Now, is he an artifact or is he just a creature? He's just a creature spirit. Okay. All right, draw for the turn. All right, tap land. Tap the tectonic edge to play a brittle effigy. So it's a one mana artifact. Ugh. You tap for four to exile it and a target creature. Gross. So he's now a three three. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any other artifacts to play. So I will attack with my two three threes. I'll block. The master with an O four. Okay. And take three. Take three. One, two, three. Okay. Um well then tap two and play a thought career. Okay, that's a looter. Looter scooter, yep. Well not looter, looter scooter. scooter. Just a straight. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh go ahead. Ban him. Alright. Untap. I'm gonna scry one. Ooh. I will keep that there, so I'll draw it. <clears throat> I'm going to play a guild gate. And then I'll play Overgrown Battlement. So that's okay. a zero four and tap it to add green for each creature I control defender. Which is so I can tap it for three, three right now. Okay. And your go. Hmm. Draw a card for the jury. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna loot. Don't need you. Alright, I'm gonna go for four mana and do a lodestone golem. So now he's at four four. And then go to combat. Uh and total power on the board you have is just two. <clears throat> I have no power. No power. Okay. So then I'll just swing in for uh three and the four four. Oh, lodestone golem, okay. So wait, we'll still mix my things one more? Non-artifact spells cost one more to cast. One more, okay. Uh, I'll block the 3-3, three, three, and I'll take four. Ugh. Okay, so they bounce, and you go down to 11? Yeah. Okay, uh, that's it for me. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, pass. How big is the load zone? 4-3? Four, 6-4 three? Uh, four with the plus one, plus one from the mouse. Oh, God, I forgot about that. <laughs> Okay. Hmm. Okay. Play a guild gate. And the effigy, is it? All right. I'll pay two. Mm -hmm. I'll play suspicious bookcase. So that's a zero four defender. Pay three and tap it. Tart creature can't be blocked. Yep. I'll tap my battlement. 
for four green, I'll pay one white and use three of the green and the white for Wakestone Gargoyle. I remember him. Yep. And then use the other green and another green for Assault Formation. Okay. So each creature I control oh, I'm sorry. assigns so damage. You can't play more than one. Oh, uh, you're right. So you got to hold on to that until uh, next turn. Gross, but I assumed gross. you paid the extra okay. whatever it is for the golem because yeah. it doesn't really matter. So well, one floating's gone. Okay. Oof. That sucks. Forgot about that. Hmm. All right. Here you go. Well, all right. Well, let's see what we draw here. Let's see. Draft the turn. Oh. All right. That was the perfect draw. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Um. So we still have one, two, three, four artifacts. Still four artifacts out. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to loot. Okay. Get rid of a Shard Phoenix. This is, this is going to break your heart, though. I'm going to play okay, a okay. Dispeller's Capsule. Oh, yeah. of course. Sorry. Uh, so we're going to go up to five power here. Ouch. Before. So I'm not going to attack with a Canonist, but I will swing in with a Lodestone Golem and the Master, who's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6. 6, 6 and a 6, 4? Or 6, 6, six and a 6, 4, yep. 6, 4. Ugh. Well, I can't take 12, that's for sure. You have too many things to get rid of my stuff. All right, well, the Creeper Vine, I'll block the 6, 6. Okay. And uh, I'll take six. All right. All right, down to five. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. All right, uh, that's it for me. I'm going to leave the man open for the capsule. Oh. All right, so untap, I'll scry one. Eh. Nah, to the bottom. All right, then I'll draw. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, that's nice. It's, it's too late, but there we go. All right. Let's try this out. Get rid of some threats, hopefully. So play tap this for three green, or four green. Mm -hmm. I'll pay one. So I have three gates out. I'll play gate Colossus. Okay. He costs one less for each gate I control. He uh, can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. And when he enters the battlefield, or sorry, when a gate enters the battlefield under my control, I may put gate clauses from my graveyard on top of my library. Yes. And he has an 8-8. Eight, eight. And then since that's a artifact, I can play another spell, right? Correct. I pay an extra one for Trigon Predator. Oh, okay. Flying two, three, when it deals coming down to your player, I can destroy target artifact or enchantment that player controls. Ooh, that would eat my board up. Yes. And nothing else I can do, you're go. Okay. Well, I'm definitely going to want to effigy the Trigon Predator. Uh, I don't have the mana for that currently. Right now. So I need to get rid of the Gate Colossus. Uh, I think your end step. I'm going to tap for three and sacrifice my Dispeller's Capsule to kill mm -hmm. the Gate Colossus. Okay. It just destroys it, right? Just destroys it, yeah. So you can definitely get it back. Oh, okay. Then I'll untap for my turn. So he's down to a five, five. One, two, three, four. Well, well I thought there was five. I guess he's a four, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Four, four. No. I might have been doing my math wrong there. Draw a card. What if? Whatever. Um, the Trigon Predator. We do need to just destroy it. <laughs> He's a 2-3? No. Yes, 2-3. Two, 2-3. Three. Two, three. So I think first I'll just go to attacks. Mm -hmm. We'll send in the the Master and the Lodestone Golem. The both, was that a 4-4? Four, 4-4 four? Uh, four, four and a 6-4. Six four. All right. So I'll block the six four with with my bookcase, and I'll take four. Probably a bad idea, but I'll take four. Yeah. 
Six, four, down to right. one. Yep. Okay. Um, so the question is, do I care about the predator? Jeez. Do I, do I care about the predator? Do I care about the predator? Because <laughs> it's not like you can really attack me, and if you do, you, go, you get to blow up an artifact, so that's cool. But does that really matter at this point? Um, I'm going to loot. Draw. Discard. Discard my powder. All right, tap three. All right. I'm going to play a squire. No, of course. <laughs> and get your powder. Back. The capsule. Oh, come on. And then I'll play the capsule. Oh, my second spell. Jerk. That's not, that's an artifact. So now that's one, two, to get rid of three, it. four, five. So yeah, he's up to a five, five. You can attack with your predator, Ouch. but then I think you're kind of SOL for yeah. blockers. But I'll go ahead and pass it back to you. All right. Scry one. Uh, mm, no, don't need that. Draw. Eh, okay. One, two, three, four. All right. Hmm. Do I get rid of the effigy or the master? Probably the effigy. All right, I'm going to tell attackers. Attackers. Attack for two in the air. No blocks. And get rid of your brittle effigy. No. Yeah, that one. Exile or graveyard? It's destroyed. Okay. See ya. Yeah. Okay, and then I'll play... Oh, no! Don't have enough mana for this. Stupid mana. That sucks. You're short with having... I need a blue, one extra blue mana. Uh, I thought this was a blue, but it is not. Which means I will have to play... Let's do this. I'll play Wall of Frost. That sounds so like that it would tap a zero, zero 07, whenever it... Uh, Blocks a creature, that creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Okay. Four, Got five creatures. Five attackers. I have four. Hmm. Did you play it you played a non artifact spell, so do you have another Oh you're right. I think I got I lost this then. Should have got rid of a creature. I guess that wouldn't have mattered. No, nah, I think either way, yeah, because I would have used the FG yeah. to get rid of one of your guys. Sure something. So. Did I get one? Did I get yeah. this one? Yeah, you got it. You I got, got it. it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's how. Oh, that's man. how it should go. It should go like a little, right? and, like a little mini death and taxes deck. All right, last one for all the marbles. Last. Okay, I'm gonna bring this one in because it's jacked up. All right, I'll go first. Go first. Okay. Um. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I don't know. I guess I could. Hopefully I'll get there. I'll keep. Okay. Sounds like you need some hoping and praying. Yes. So you keep. A little bit. A little bit. E mm -hmm. I'm on the draw, but I don't think I can keep it. Aw. Yeah. Close. It's close to being keepable, but, you know, it's kind of like if you don't draw that, if you don't draw that third land, you're kind of not right. doing much. Okay. The good old three shuffle, three cut. That's what I always do. People it always throws people off. I love to do the uh, the hate shuffle when you're just like oh. praying for somebody to get mana screwed and you're shuffling their deck. Right. <laughs> you're like dead in their eyes. And you just keep you just keep <laughs> rifle sh rifle shuffling their deck. My friend likes to cut and then take the top card and put it around the bottom. There you go. Do you like that card? You're not going to get it. Yeah, too bad. All right. Um, first, I'll play a Terramorphic Expanse. Okay. And I'll get a island and you may go. Okay. I'll draw my land for the turn. Yes. <laughs> land. Go. Oh, what? <laughs> nice land. 
Yeah, I guess if I had, if I had to draw land for the turn, I, I, that's not a horrible right. thing to draw. It's just not very exciting, you know? All right, let's see. Okay, that's, that doesn't help, but oh well. Um, do a forest, and I'll play Overgrown Battlement. Okay. Is that the one that taps and you for me? You may mana? go. Yes, taps for green mana for each defender okay. I control. That's a good one. To, that's a good one to have. Not bad. Okay. Full step. Yeah. Good. Got. Up. Oh. Oh, not a land. That's good. Now the question is, how greedy do I want to get? <laughs> All the greed. Greed is oh, good. Greed is good. Yeah, we're gonna be a little greedy. So I'm gonna just for now play a capsule and then. Pass uh, it. Of course. All right, untap, draw, interesting. I'll play Plaza of Harmony, I gain no life. Okay. I'll play, oops, actually, tap that for one. Yeah, we'll do that, okay. So I'll play Doorkeeper. Okay, that's on, uh, you get to scry uh, during your upkeep, right? No, that's the, I pay two and a blue, tap it. Target player puts a top X cards of his oh. or her library into his or her graveyard, where X is number of creatures I control with Defender. Okay. And then technically, I can tap this for one, two green. Oh yeah, here we go. Two green, one green, X Bane guard, Guardian. Oh. Okay. So that's the one that taps for mana for each Defender I control. All right, here we go. So you have two, two walls that can tap for for X. Mana and one for milling. Okay. This is not, not looking great. <laughs> None of those are artifacts or enchantments. <laughs> no. Nope. Or enchantments. All right. Dread statuary. All right. I have to stay the path of my greed, so go ahead. Okay. Let's see. Untap. Draw. I can tap for three green. Okay. And the blue to play Geist. So I have one green floating. Okay. Um, then I will play, I'll tap this for one, two, three, four mana of any combination. So I'll use the one green and one white from this to play Wall of Essence. So I have four, three mana still mm -hmm. floating. And I'll play, oh, I'll use that three to do Doorkeeper. Okay, that's going to be so for So that's one, five? two, three, four, five cards. Oh, jeez, okay. Get the mill. Island. Darksteel. Island. <laughs> Gravedigger. Island. Okay. You didn't need any islands, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and you may go. Well, I got to get rid of that guy. No, he's great. Yeah. Totally. Island. All right. Wait for his All bottle. Right. Let's see you get the basic land. Yeah, I'll go ahead and crack it. Because I feel like I don't want to get milled out. I have answers, but I can also lose those answers pretty quickly with <laughs> right. being milled <laughs> being milled out. Okay. Uh, what do we want here? Let's go for, I guess, a swamp just to have it. Uh, and that's uh, that's good for me. I'll go ahead and uh, pass pass back to you. Oh, okay. So untap. Uh, doing my upkeep. I'll scry. Um, don't know if I need that. Put that at the bottom. And then I'll draw. Have oh, cheese. Okay. Oh, I have all this too. Cheese. All right. Too much. Too much going on here. Well, milling five per turn is great. And I will pay this to do five. No, I'll do this. So that's five. So three. So that's six mana. Three of it to mill you for five. Okay. Bobble. So three. All right. Island. Bajukabog. Capsule. Capsule. And... No. Oh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So then I have three green left over. So I'll tap for five of any combination. So I use three green, 
So yeah, three green. Three, you had three floating, right? And then you tap for five more. Yeah. So three green, a white, plus two more green to play Archon of Valor's Reach. Oh, righty. You cannot play oh, artifacts. What? Why? <laughs> uh, <laughs> flying Vigilance Trample. As it enters the battlefield, choose artifact, enchantment, instant sorcery, or planeswalker. Players can't cast spells of the chosen type. Aw, really? I'm, I'm sorry. That might... I just ruined this might, game. That might... <laughs> yeah, that might lock me out of the game. I'm sorry. Is he an that artifact, for chance? No, he's an arc uh, creature. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, I shouldn't play that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, all right, go. I did enough. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I have no idea what I can draw now. Oh, it's an artifact. And it's the artifact I wanted. Um, okay. How big is he? Five, six. Five, six? Uh, yeah, okay. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to play a non-artifact spell. Oh, okay. Tajnar oh. Swordsmith. What's he uh, doing? I'm going to do, if he comes into play, is that okay? Yes, yes, he's fine, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to pay zero for X and then okay. search my deck. Definitely going to get a Sigil. But I'm also going to check to see if I have any way to deal with that. But I'm pretty sure all of my answers are artifacts. That's an artifact. I could arrest it, but that doesn't help me out. No. So, yeah, I think you got me locked out of the game. So oh, I'm going to go ahead, I'm go ahead and scoop it. But uh, oh, good game. That was a bad play. I was, no, that was uh, a great play. <laughs> that was a great play. Oh. So what I had in my hand, though, was um, I was why I was saying I was being greedy was I was trying uh -huh. to figure out how much to, to save oh, for the chalice. But uh -huh. in hindsight, I probably should have fired that off for two and then played him on four and then got my sigil out next turn because oh, yeah. I think I could have got that down in time uh, to maybe make him big enough of a threat Yeah. Uh, and then I did have a Gilded Lotus and then I drew my Elixir of Immortality so I would have been okay against the mill plan yeah because I was worried that you were going to have creatures that have to keep blocking with my guys and I wouldn't be milling as much but that was cool I mean I think it was a lot of fun opening up the collection and then trying to figure out yeah. like what was valuable like what were just good cards and then what kind of decks were already constructed and then like how can I make them better or like what suited my play style more. And I think this was a pretty fun deck to do like an all artifacts strategy with being able to recur stuff and loot things um, and get to play on the art with, the, with my graveyard a bit, which I got to do in the first game. The second game, my deck performed much like I thought it <laughs> yeah. would as right, just a like a tax beat. deck. But in the end, I could not beat the mill, uh, <laughs> the mill. and I could not beat being locked out of playing artifacts. The stupid sideboard card right. that turns off, you know, like a uh, narrow decks like artifacts. Apparently, yeah, no, that's a great that's a great uh, uh, strategy to have to put in there. Your deck worked basically how you wanted it to work, well, except I never got to attack with my defenders. You did. You never got to attack with your defenders. You, yeah, you got the to mill. None of that worked. <laughs> Yeah, you totally got to mill, like, no problem. Yeah. Uh, and then you just got to, like, lock me out of the game, which which is a satisfying feeling. You don't have to pretend that it's not a good, that it's not a good feeling, Brandon. You shouldn't be ashamed oh, of yeah. locking somebody else. No, I'm not ashamed of mill. I love mill. <laughs> oh, no. Well, mill, mill, is, mill is a disgusting, Oh, you uh, mean the, the, the one card? Yeah. No, I am ashamed of that. I am sorry. <laughs> I will ever, forever be ashamed. Because <laughs> I don't like playing games where it's just like, oh, I lost. And it's like, oh, okay, well, that... I'm sorry <laughs> that we were playing and I just locked everything out. It's like, yeah, it's, it's like when you play commander sometimes and people just like, I'm going to combo off now. It's like, oh, okay, I guess we were having fun, but we were, yeah, we were having fun. Well, that's fine. I yeah. much prefer like a game to end, end quickly than just to like, linger True. we forever. were, we have been playing for two hours. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I, I think I owe you now the small <laughs> bill right. season four, which I was going to Yankee that. swap. At my at my work Christmas party, but now it's it has oh. your name on it, so I will have to uh, <laughs> I'll have to send that to you and 
just so you know it's going to come to you, I'm going to go ahead and autograph it. So it's a well, collector's now item. Now I can't now. open it. <laughs> no, <laughs> now, now, now you're a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a conundrum you have to deal with. Will you right? <laughs> open this to watch season four and spoil the signature as a collector's item <laughs> or keep it on a shelf? Now, which I'd probably just keep it on a shelf, honestly. But yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know where that's going exactly. The on, on my my shelf behind me. <laughs> yeah, Brandon. I just want to. I just want to say thank you for for coming on the show and uh, talking with me today, and also for you know dipping into your collection and shipping me uh, a random buy that I could open and no unbox problem. myself. I think the <laughs> gameplay was was super fun. I'm also a huge fan of limited. So being able to do a creative way of a, you know, being able to do like a creative take on limited by having a truly random chaos assortment of a sealed pool was so much fun. And I'd be curious, you know, like uh, what are you what are your plans for uh, 2020 and like what kind of videos are you looking to make in, in the new year? Uh, I think I kind of want to make some pioneer deck techs because I'm really into pioneer, actually, like. That's that format's just kind of growing on me, and uh, I mean, if I get another preview card, I'd love to do more skits. Uh, I might even do a few more skits just without a preview card. Like, I have ideas. I just, you know, just gotta get them out there. <laughs> if somebody wants to, you know, support you or um, follow you, where can they find the the content that you make, and where can they find you on social media? Uh. My YouTube, of course, youtube.com slash booster tutor. I have a Patreon, patreon.com slash booster tutor. Uh, I'm on Twitter at booster underscore tutor. And that's about it. Just those. You can contact me on Twitter anytime you want. I usually always reply to people. So that's it. You know, thanks for hanging okay. out with me on Babelfish, Brandon. I really appreciate it for you to take, take the time, tell me about your process, and um, share with me kind of like your insider trading secrets for buying <laughs> random buys and also you know just for hanging out and like doing a fun uh some some fun games in paper because you know right. i don't get to play in paper that much and just oh. being able to shuffle the cards really is a lot more satisfying right. than, than than clicking a mouse you're right yeah thank you so much for having me on here this is awesome cool well i wish you the best in 2020 and hopefully uh you know we'll we'll talk again soon Thanks for watching the video! If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.